In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint a cute little watercolor house or building illustration. And if these look familiar, it's because I'm really inspired once again by the style of Iroville. First, I need to quickly make a sketch. And you can download this exact one in the description if you want to follow along with me while I'm painting. One of the key things with illustrating buildings is that you really should work from a real photo. Even if you don't end up making a building that looks similar to the photo, at least you need some kind of reference for the roof style, window style, just something to generally base everything off of. So now that the sketch is done, you can see some of the similarities with the original photo. And obviously there's more differences than similarities, but it was really helpful to be able to see the door details, the window details, you know, and also the color of the roof and the walls. And I'll roughly try to approximate that when I paint this illustration. I've set up the sketch so it's the very top layer and set it to multiply and that's because I don't want it to cover up what I'm going to be painting. And then from now on, I'm going to be painting on a blank layer down here. And I'll start with the abstract round brush from the regular watercolor kit. And for the color, just any kind of random beige color will work. Uh, and I'll fill out the beige areas of this house. And after that kind of loose background wash is finished, I'm going to cut it out with the eraser brush. And I'm going to do it at a pretty small size. And the eraser is set to the fine liner pen and I'll just cut out each of the areas of the house that need to be this beige color. Now here are the two elements I need. Everything else needs to be cleared. So an easy way to do that is to just use the selection tool set to automatic. And I'm gonna tap and drag down here until that whole area is filled out. But I'm gonna make sure I don't go too far by accident. So this is pretty good. Then I'm gonna go to add and I'll just tap the little triangle portion up here. Now both areas I wanna keep are selected, but when I invert that selection, it's gonna select everything else. Then we can just tap on that layer and clear it. Uh, and that's just a quick way to get rid of all that stuff without having to manually erase it. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing with the roof, but this time I'm gonna use a different color and I'm gonna do it on a different layer. And the last thing I need to fill in here are these pillars. And I'm gonna do that on their own layer as well. And I'll just use a brown color, maybe something like this, and then the fine liner pen. And now with the main structure of the house finished, I'm gonna add all the little details and then I'll add the shading. And the first details that I'm gonna do are the lines on the roof. So I'll kind of zoom in here. And I'm gonna select the layer with the roof I'll make a new layer above it, and I'm gonna use this kind of uh, light gray color to do the lines, and I'll adjust the transparency later. For the brush, I'm gonna use the fine liner pen, and I'm just gonna add a bunch of lines like this. And after that, uh, because I did these lines on their own layer, I can just lower the transparency to zero, slowly raise it back up, just until the lines are barely visible, and then I can merge it with the uh, roof layer. So there we go, I've just combined the lines with the roof just to save on layers here and keep this a little bit more organized. The next details on the roof are gonna be some dark lines. So usually I do this in the order of first the light details followed by the darker ones. So again, I'll make a new layer above the roof. And this time I'll select a pretty dark red color. I think something like that. Same fine liner pen, uh, same size. And this time I'm just gonna add a couple of dark lines mostly ar around the uh, edges of the roof. So these dark lines look a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna lower the opacity just like I did on the light lines, and I think I'll set it to around 70%. And again, just like before, I'll merge it with the roof layer to save on layers. And now we can move on and do the windows. So I'm gonna select the uh, actual walls of the house here. I'll make a new layer above that and I'll fill those in real quick. And just to save time to fill all these in, I'm just gonna grab the black color from the color picker and fill them in like this. And next I'll do the window frames and I'll do those in a slightly lighter brown color. I think something like this will work. And if you want to, you can also adjust the opacity of these elements as well. I do want them to be pretty dark, so I think I'll keep them around 80 or 90%. Then I'll just merge them with the uh, walls of the house. 
And after the windows are done, I'm gonna add some lines to the corners to add a little bit of contrast and also fill in this roof detail. And I'll use a slightly lighter version of that uh, windowsill brown color for that. Now this space around the house, this is an apron, uh, and it's a really common thing you see in tropical climates. And I'm gonna differentiate that to make it look more like concrete. So I'm gonna use the freehand selection tool, and I'll try to just isolate that portion. There we go. And then because it's selected like that, I can just go to my hue saturation and brightness adjustment, maybe make it a little bit darker and desaturate it. And it's a subtle thing, but this is supposed to be just concrete. So having a few different tones in here does make it look kind of nice. So after all the details and textures of the house have been painted in, uh, I could move on and do the shading. So for that, I'll make sure all the different layers of the house are merged together onto one. And I'm gonna use the uh, freehand selection tool to do all the shadows. And as an example, I want there to be a shadow being cast from the roof onto the side of the house. So I'll just make a big selection that covers that. Then I can go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just darken it a little bit. Another key shadow I like to add is kind of on the side of these pillars. Uh, it, you know, you don't have to make this perfectly realistic, but you know, if the light is generally sort of coming from this angle, it makes sense that there's a highlight on one side of each pillar. So I'm gonna use the selection tool to kind of approximate that. And I'll just brighten that. There we go. And I'll do the same thing on the other one. And I'm just gonna go through and add some shadows and highlights wherever I think it uh, looks good. And I think as a finishing touch, I'll add a kind of loose highlight on the roof. So that selection I'll feather out, hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just brighten that and saturate it a little bit. I also like to add a couple of kind of interacting shadows. So for example, these beams, they ought to cast some kind of shadow. So I'll rough those in. And even though this palm tree doesn't exist yet, I do want it to cast a little bit of a shadow on the house. And this just helps tie everything together. And the house is pretty much done, but I do need to cut a kind of channel through the house so the palm tree isn't overlapping. And I'm just gonna use the eraser brush set to the fine liner pen and I'll just go in there and just kind of loosely cut that out. Now the palm trees are pretty easy to do. They're gonna be on their own layer though, so I'll make a new layer above the house. I'm gonna use a pretty warm kind of light gray tone, something like that. For the brush, I'll use the abstract round again, and maybe around 20% size. I'll just uh, carefully rough these in, and all of these trunks are stroke-based, and it doesn't matter if the width varies because that just happens with palm trees naturally. Now all the bottoms of the palm trees need to be trimmed off, so I'll just do that with the eraser. Now for the palm leaves, I'm gonna make them on their own layer as well, and I'm basically gonna use the same brush, same size. I just changed the color to a sort of olivey green tone. And this part where they overlap on the house, I'll just use the eraser to quickly cut that back. And after that, I'm gonna use the water blender brush uh, at a pretty small size, just big enough to fit in there. And I'm gonna try to blur the kind of center bits of these palm trees where all the brush strokes come together. So after the main colors have been laid down for the palm trees, I can move on and add some texture. So first I'll start with adding texture to the trunk of each tree. And I'm gonna make sure I've got the trunk layer selected. I'll make a new layer above that and I'm gonna, just gonna use this random dark color, fine liner pen, and I'm gonna add a couple of lines pretty sparingly down each palm tree trunk. And those lines are a little bit too dark, so that's why I did them on their own layer. Uh, I'm just gonna lower the transparency to zero, 
raise it back up just until those texture details are barely, barely visible. And again, I'll just merge that with the uh, palm tree trunks to save on layers. Now for the leaf details, I'll make sure the uh, leaves are selected. I'll make a new layer above that. And this time I'm gonna use a very, very light olivey green tone and I'll roughly sketch those in. Same fine liner pen, uh, same size as before. And I think it also looks nice if you add some dark lines as well. So I'll choose a slightly darker green tone and then fill those in. But this time I'm gonna add those uh, much more sparingly than I did the light lines. Now all the details for the uh, palm leaves are on their own layer. I'm gonna merge them with the uh, original leaf layer there just to again, save on layers but they look a little bit too kind of washed out in my opinion. So I'm gonna to try to use the hue, saturation, and brightness to kind of darken them and maybe saturate them a little bit. There we go, I think that looks a little bit better. And next I can move on and do the shading on the palm trees, uh, but they're on two separate layers right now, so I'll merge those together. And I'll do the shading the same way I did on the house. I'll just use the selection tool and just add some shadows and highlights wherever I think it makes sense. And there we go, this cute little house illustration is all done. And uh, here's the final result. And I mentioned this earlier, but I wanna stress it again. I really find it's so much easier to paint houses when I'm working from a reference photo. Whenever I try to just make houses from my imagination, they just don't look quite right and they all end up kind of looking the same. I think when you work from a photo, it just gives you more kind of realistic things to draw your inspiration from especially how roofs come together and stuff like that. And if you like this style of art and you're looking for more inspiration, be sure to go and check out Iroville's portfolio. I don't know her, I'm not affiliated with her or anything like that, but I just really love her artwork and I'll make sure to put a link to her website uh, in the description below. And that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, please give a like to this video uh, if you think I've earned it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.